Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Chow with Lau and today I've got a brand new carbon steel wok and I'm going to season it on camera to show you how I do it. Let's go. Good noise, I like that. If you've followed my channel for any length of time you'll know that I usually use a non-stick wok. Why? Because it's easy, doesn't stick, guaranteed, automatic, unless you do something really bad, it's gonna be okay. Now, traditionally, most Chinese chefs will use something similar to this, a carbon steel wok. I'll stop doing that, by the way. And there's a reason for that, because the way that the wok works in terms of how the steel holds onto the heat and gets hot quick is perfect for stir fry cooking. You might have heard of the word or the term wok hay, which is kind of like how you can get it so intense, so hot, that it really, really seals in the flavor, cooks quickly. Everything you, you think about Chinese food, that's what these woks represent, okay? And there's nothing wrong with using non-stick. I still will use them, especially if I'm after something really quick and I can't be bothered to actually get out this wok because it does take a little bit, a little bit, not much. It takes a little bit more effort, but once you actually can master it, you'll find yourself using this more and more often. And the first step we're gonna do is actually take a new, brand new wok. This has just come through the post and we're going to season it, which means that we're gonna kinda of give it that automatic non-stickness without the use of Teflon, which these woks inherently have if you treat them right. Now, the first step that you have gotta do is because these steel woks are always leaving the factory with a, a coating, a film to stop them from rusting. Obviously, you don't want to have a brand new wok turn up with rust on it, so they coat them. So the first thing you're gonna do, I'm not gonna do this on camera because who wants, me to, who, wants to, who wants to see me do the washing up? If you do, leave the comments below. That might be a whole new channel. All I'm gonna do is use soapy water, get one of those scrubbers with the plastic kind of scrubber on it and give it, you can use a metal one as well, this will, this will take it. Use some detergent, give it a good scrubbing so you get all that coating off, give it a good five minute scrub and away you go. That should take this coating off and we should be ready to go to the next step, which is the actual seasoning. So I'm just gonna leave you for a minute and then I'll come back with a very, very clean wok. Right guys, so we've given the wok a proper wash with detergent and then we're gonna wipe it dry with some paper towels. The handle's dry so it don't slip. Wipe the outside. Also wash the outside of it as well because that has the coating on it too. Okay, so there we go. So on to the actual seasoning. What I've got is a medium heat on the stovetop. And what we need to do is with a dry wok, get it nice and hot and just let it kind of heat up and it'll start to change color. Okay, now this is easier on a gas hob. Um, if you don't have a wok burner, by the way, you can use one of these uh, trivets that will hold your wok on quite nicely for general cooking as well as this. But if you have an induction or, a, or an electric stovetop, you can still start this process off. Um, you may want to finish the sides with a blowtorch. That works quite well. And if you haven't got a blowtorch, then perhaps just find a neighbor or a friend or a family member who has got a gas hob and go over there and season it on their stovetop. That would be the best way to do it. As you can see, the color is starting to change. It was kind of like a, a deep graphite gray before and I've got a slight kind of bluing effect. Apparently this should go through some rainbow colors. Not so evident on this, which is already a dark steel, but if you have one of those carbon steel woks that is more of a sort of light steel color, you'll see this even more in evidence. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just let that get really nice and hot. And as it changes color, we try to move the focus point of the, 
of the flame so that it does that kind of bluey effect or that rainbow effect on all surfaces of the wok all around the inside. Obviously it's treating the outside as we go. Take your time, this is not something you should rush. It takes as long as it takes. But once you've got all of that surface having changed color, then you've completed stage one. Of course, the reason why we season the wok at all is to give it that kind of non-stick effect. If you do this bit right and keep it well maintained, this will be every bit as non-stick as your Teflon coated pans and woks or frying pans that you might have already. It's just the way that this kind of literally seasons the metal, gets it kind of going, it seals in the pores so that food doesn't get a chance to stick uh, in, in the little microscopic pits that is in everything. I mean, it, it looks really, obviously this is a textured wok, not all of them are. Um, I mean, it's quite interesting because I've never had a wok like this before. I thought it'd be really interesting to see how this one cooks, but your normal kind of carbon steel woks are normally kind of that lighter steel and they don't have these pits and they feel really smooth. However, on a microscopic level, they're not. So seasoning a wok is uh, even essential for the ones that look really smooth. And that really kind of helps with the cooking process, which is what we're here for, of course. Try to make sure that you heat up every square centimetre of the wok. You need to try to cover it, get maximum coverage all over to make sure that we're not missing any bits that will end up causing you to have sticky patches. Right, that's stage two done. What we're gonna do now is let it cool. It's important we do this. We're gonna let it cool, and then we're gonna take on stage three. Stay tuned. Right guys, stage three. Now we've burnt the wok once. We're gonna actually do it again, but this time with some oil. I'm gonna add uh, probably a tablespoon or two of vegetable oil or corn oil, any cooking oil. Please don't use olive oil or sesame oil because they will burn. They're not really meant for cooking. Um, they're more for flavor really, aren't they? Um, right, so we're gonna put this into our wok. The wok is cooled down now, so it's not going to catch fire or anything. Then I'm gonna use an ordinary kitchen roll, fold it up a little bit. And all we're gonna do is smear it all over the inside surface of the wok. Okay, and we're gonna take the wok to um, smoking point. So the oil is gonna smoke away. As the oil smokes away, that'll complete the, well, it'll, it'll season the wok. It'll do what we need it to do. And after we've smeared the oil on, we're gonna get the wok smoking hot. So I'm just gonna let it sit for a little while, get the middle bit done, and then I'm gonna, again, rotate it and try to, and then burn the whole surface of the wok to get that seasoning effect. Like it's starting to smoke, that's exactly what we want. Okay, don't be afraid of this bit. This is how it is supposed to happen. Okay, obviously, if there's any flame shoot up, stop, stop, turn the wok away off and then just walk away or put a damp towel over it, okay? Safety first. 
Okay, look. Okay, here we go. Ooh, hate that noise. Okay. So we're a medium high heat to do this bit. Again, don't be afraid. This is what's supposed to happen. The oil is supposed to sort of burn and smoke off. Yeah, if this was cooking, this would be too hot, but we're not cooking, okay? We are seasoning, sealing the wok, if you like. Sealing, I think that's the, probably the best way to explain what we're doing at all, really. And that keeps in. It creates and locks in that kind of non-stick non effect. A word about sort of aftercare once you've actually seasoned your wok. You'll find that every time you use your wok, this color will, will deepen, especially if you've got one of those light colored woks to start with, it'll go darker and darker and darker. This one's already dark, so I'm not gonna see much effect straight away. It will change color, obviously. Okay, so the more you use your wok, the better it gets. Hence the term seasoning. This is kind of the first step of that, really. Every time you use your wok, sometimes it's gonna get messy. Sometimes things are gonna kind of um, stick onto it and make it a little bit messy in there. So to clean it, what you want to do is pour some water into it, heat it up on the wok, and use one of your utensils, your ladles or your chans, your, your, your spatulas, whatever you're using, to scrape that off. And then as it softens up, get rid of that, put it under the tap, rinse it, use a, a soft scouring pad, one of those plastic ones, um, to remove any excess debris. Okay, what you shouldn't do, what you don't want to do, although sometimes it is necessary, is use detergent again because once you kind of start stripping the oil that we're burning onto here then we're going to lose the seasoning of course if that happens because you have to do it or whatever then we do this process again you probably won't have to do the dry start uh, burning probably put a little bit of oil in and just do this process again and that will probably be okay So again, this takes as long as it takes. We're just trying to get every bit done. It's harder to tell on this one because obviously it's dark. <laughs> it's already dark. Um, so I'm just trusting to judgment that I'm getting all the way around. You can't really overdo it. Uh, you can do every surface a couple of times, it'd be fine. Probably be better actually. Okay, but if we can get the smoke on every surface, then we've done our job. Okay, like I said, try not to use detergent to clean it. Just use water. And after you've washed your wok, every time you finish cooking with it, there is a certain way you've got to treat it to make sure it doesn't start to rust or anything. So use your water, like I said, put some water in, give it a scrub with your scrubber or your scrape with your ladle, whatever you need to do. And then perhaps use a kitchen towel to take off, uh, well, pour, pour away any excess water you've got. Anything after that you can dry off with a, a, a cloth or a, or a kitchen, kitchen towel and then use your your stove your hob top to uh, heat up your wok to to get rid of every la last bit of moisture again drive it all off make sure your your wok is bone dry and then after it's cooled make sure obviously it's cooled before you touch it then use another piece of kitchen roll and just lightly smear a smidgen of cooking oil across the wok and across the back of the wok as well. And that will, that will stop your wok from rusting. 
it basically gives it that little um, waterproof barrier, you know, water, water and oil don't mix. This will make sure that water doesn't get to your wok and therefore it won't rust. And there's nothing worse than coming back to a wok that's been stood only for a few days and there's a rusty bit in the bottom. So you've got to scrub that off and start again almost. So don't forget that bit. It's, it's quite easy, it doesn't take very long, but it, it's worth doing it rather than just sort of, that, that's the difference between this and a non-stick wok, where a non-stick wok you just put it in your dishwasher or you clean it up in your sink and it's done. Okay, and there's a lot to be said about non-stick woks. Um, I can't say anything bad about them. It's just obviously because they're thicker, they don't tend to heat up as quick and you want that kind of speed sometimes. So this is gonna be really exciting because I'm gonna start some of my recipes using this for you. You don't have to, a lot of, you guys kind of respond and quite, I think quite positively to the fact that I'm using utensils that you're gonna find in your own home kitchen rather than anything specialist. Although woks like this can be found very, very easily, very, very cheaply, so it's not really a problem. But people tend to be afraid of this bit. There's nothing to be afraid of. In fact, it's quite enjoyable to do this. It's quite uh, therapeutic. <laughs> and um, yeah, so enjoy it. But either way, you wanna go with non-stick woks, traditional woks, doesn't matter to me. It's all down to flavors, baby. <laughs> right, I think we'd, look, check that out. Right, I'm gonna switch the heat off. Look at that smoke coming off there. Let it cool, and then I'm gonna rinse it down with water, and then I'm gonna show you a little quick demo on, on how you might wanna cook with this. Okay, so I'll be back with you in one minute. Right guys, so now I've finished doing the seasoning bit. I've given the wok a rinse in water and I'm just drying it on the stove top. You can use kitchen towel, uh, clean, dry dishcloth, whatever you want. And if you're putting it away now, smear that oil on whilst it's cool, <laughs> when it's cool, and then put it away as you normally would, okay? But I'm gonna just show you a little bit of cooking on this. So that's dry. It's a little bit hot but never mind. Cool down a little bit. Probably too hot for what I'm gonna do. I'm going to, I've got a couple of eggs which I've beaten. I'm just gonna make a very simple scrambled egg. Got a little bit of oil. Okay. Get that nice and hot. My egg. Just gonna pour it in. And let's see how we've managed to make this non-stick or not. That's not bad, is it? That's not bad. This is not my classic um, scrambled egg, by the way. This is just a bit of a test to see, oh wow, because scrambled egg can be very, very sticky and it's quite difficult sometimes. Sometimes on an old non-stick pan, they end up sticking. That's when you need to change your non-stick pan normally, because that means something's not quite right. Look at that. Not bad, Do you know what? That looks good enough to eat. I'm gonna put a little bit of salt and pepper on it. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. You heard it here first, folks. Something that is good enough to eat on the Chow With Lao channel. Look at that. Seconds, that's not bad. I don't know if you can see this. Um, probably a little bit, let's put it here. Okay. But I just imagine, after seeing that, how quick and easy an egg fried rice would be. Okay, that's not bad at all. Now you know I like my taste test. <laughs> this isn't a proper one, but let's see if it's all right. Uh, put your money where your mouth is basically, isn't it? <laughs> that's pretty good. But did you see how fast that happened? If you've seen me cooking on non-stick woks before, 
it generally doesn't happen like this because they don't kind of have that intensity of heat. It's incredible, really. Right. <laughs> Didn't think I was going to do a taste test today. That was pretty good. <laughs> going really highbrow here. Scrambled egg on chow with lao. So, let me show you. Water. This is how we clean up. Okay. Using one of these. There's no detergent on this. See how easily everything comes off? I know it's only egg, but sometimes that can be a problem. One thing you might have to bear in mind, that there are things that might start to um, break down your seasoning. If you're using um, acidic ingredients, if you're making sweet and sour sauce or something in this, or anything similar, got vinegar in it, or any kind of acid, that will, that will melt away your seasoning. So you might have to do it again. Might be worth considering using another type of pot to, to cook that bit. That's where your non-stick might come in handy. <clears throat> Yeah, but it's, it's not really. I quite enjoy doing the seasoning bit, to be fair. Right, so that's that. I'm just going to pour this away. In the sink. Sorry, I'm not filming this. Give it a wipe. Okay. Dry it off however you want. I always like to do this because you know it's really, really dry inside and out. Without you having to think about it, it's going to drive off any moisture from the back of it as well as from the uh, front of it. Just wait for all that to sizzle away. Okay, once it's dry on the inside, it's pretty much dry on the outside too, right. Okay, let it cool down for a few seconds. Make sure you don't burn yourself. These things stay really, really hot. Yeah, always exercise a little bit of caution. So I've dipped this kitchen roll in a bit of cooking oil again, and we're just going to, hold on, let's put a little bit more on. There we go. So all we're gonna do is smear it across, give it a light coating all over outside as well. There you go, guys. Done. Done. <laughs> That's it. Nothing to be afraid of. This is easy peasy. And the more you use it after this, the easier it gets to use. So the first time, I wouldn't have been surprised if that egg had stuck or burnt or whatever, because even though I'd seasoned it, that was the first time of use. So um, it, can, it can happen that it sticks, but hey, I like this wok. It's really cool. Like I said, it's, it's a little bit different because it's got little little pits in it, which apparently the technology behind it, I always take these things with a pinch of salt, apparently that helps with the non-stick thing, even though it has more surface area, it makes it more slippery. Don't know, uh, Google it, uh, you tell me. <laughs> if you have anything that you found out, leave them in the comments below, okay? Right guys, so I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial. There are different ways you can season the wok. If you go on YouTube or Google it, there'll be people who do it differently from me. Um, this is something I've picked up over the years from my mum working at Takeaway. Not that I ever used to do this in Takeaway, I used to watch. Um, but this is, this is a good way. I've seen people do it in ovens. I've seen people do it on hobs, but slightly differently. But this works for me. And I'm not telling you that anybody else is wrong, but I think you've seen the evidence of what I've done today, so that's all good. So if you like this video, please, please subscribe. <laughs> Leave a comment, please comment. And um, yeah, if you really want to support the channel, if you like what we do here, 
buying things like this costs money and at the end of the day uh, people sometimes super thanks me which is that little heart shaped thing underneath the video and that helps to fund purchases like this so I can show you how to do it um, in my next video I've got something a little bit special lined up actually so that would be cool so that really helps so if you really want to support me that way that would be so cool uh, but totally up to you you watching it is even more important obviously so I'm really grateful for that see you in the next video and have a good week take care bye bye